We all know that fire can be extremely destructive. Fire can definitely hurt us. When I was a curious little boy, I found out firsthand that fire equals to pain when I stuck my finger over an open flame. You can be very sure I never tried that again. And in the Bible, we have read that the lake of fire will be the ultimate punishment for Satan, his demons, and unrepentant sinners. So fire definitely has a scary side to it. But on the other hand, fire has also been used by God to bring a powerful touch to His people. God spoke to Moses through a burning bush, and God led the people of Israel with a pillar of fire by night. In Solomon's temple, we read how fire from heaven is linked to the glory of God. In the book of Acts, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is accompanied by tongues of fire. And Hebrews tells us that God Himself is like an all-consuming fire. So today, let's explore the kind of fire that we want more of in our lives, the kind that will bring revival into us and through us into the world. Coming to the School of Theology could well be one of the most important decisions of your life. At SOT, we are committed to help you become an effective minister of the Gospel. Our heartbeat is to see disciples of Christ being raised up, overflowing with the love of God, strong in the Word, and moving in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. City Harvest School of Theology has been so amazing for me because of the passion for prayer, the sound Bible teachings, and the practical ministry opportunities. I've been able to serve in various ministries, preach, lead praise and worship, pray for the sick, prophesy over people, and was even able to go on my first mission trip. What has impacted me the most in SOT is truly the relationship and discipleship. Having experienced it myself, even within a short period of time, I am greatly impacted by it and I could clearly see that it is one of the most fundamental things in church growth. Spiritually, I am growing deeper and purer in my knowledge of God, in my pursuit of God, and in how to lead His people into His beautiful and powerful presence. SOT SOT是我个人生命的品格和态度 Fushi 是隨時隨地可以全港和應用的 When I decided to take seven months of no pay leave, God totally kept His promise and blessed me in ways that were beyond my imagination. Not only did I receive three awards along with other financial blessings, this year, my mom finally received Christ as her Lord and Saviour. With everything that I've learned in SOT, I definitely feel more equipped to lead a cell group and inspire others to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ in the most practical and effective way. I pray that you would consider coming to the School of Theology. You'll be transformed by the teachings of the Bible and you will have encounters after encounters in the Holy Spirit that will change your life and ministry. Your seven months here will make you an all-rounded Christian that will glorify God in your world. Deep in our hearts, each of us wants to be loved, to find true love. The question is, where are you seeking love? Right now, Kong He wants you to discover a love that will never end, that will meet the deepest longing of your heart. Please visit konghee.com and click on today's offer to get a copy of Kong's message on the greatest love. In his series, I Choose Love, learn that love is a decision that you can make. 
And when you choose love, you in turn will receive love far greater than you could ever imagine. This four-part series is our way of thanking you for your gift of any amount in support of this ministry. So please take a moment and visit konghee.com and choose love. Tonight, I don't have a long sermon. Just to share with you three things that I, I pray is beyond a teaching, but it's a prophetic word from God to all of us here in this house. Number one, I believe God wants us to have the fire of passion. The fire of passion. You know, fire is strong. Fire is intense. Fire consumes. It burns. Well, passion is like that. Passion, the word itself, means strong feelings, intense emotion. It consumes us. Fire is like burning passion. That is why in, in English we have the phrase, are you burning with passion? It gives us energy. Passion gives us enthusiasm. Somebody once said this before, the most powerful weapon on earth it's a human soul on fire. You know, that's the most powerful weapon. A human soul that's on fire for God. Somebody else says, a person with fire is better than a hundred others who are merely interested. Jesus himself says, the zeal for your house, the zeal for your church consumes me like fire. That means Jesus is very passionate for the house of God. Even as a child, when he was 12 years old, where do you find Jesus? You find him lost in church. You find him studying the Bible, talking, discussing with the older members in the temple. You find him lingering in the presence of God, such that even Mary and Joseph couldn't find him for three days and three nights. They lost him because Jesus was in church. He was interested in the spiritual things of the kingdom. And this is who we are. Passion makes you fall in love. But passion also makes you stay in love. Not just fall in love and fall out of love, but it makes you stay in love. And really when that's all is said and done, that's what Christianity is all about. Loving God, loving people. Christianity, our faith, is really about love. It didn't matter what Simon Peter did. Didn't matter if he denied Jesus three times, that he let the Savior down, that he disappointed him. It didn't matter. What Jesus wanted to know at the end of the day was this, Simon, tell me, do you love me? Do you still love me? It doesn't matter if you have let me down. It doesn't matter if you have done wrong things. I just want to know, do you still love me? You see, love matters so much to Jesus Christ because he's the husband and we are his bride. So this relationship is like a marriage. So really, for every husband, I speak as one, the real big deal after years and years of marriage is, does my wife still love me as much? And I can tell you, for every man, that's what he is most concerned about. You know, Simon and I were first married 21 years ago. And I mean, can you imagine? We've been married for so long. And when we were first married, she was so new in the ministry. I was already serving God for quite a number of years, but she was very new. And we used to meet ministry, international ministries. And when the church was starting out, and she was always feeling very unsure of herself, and she would say, Kong, would I embarrass you in front of all the rest? Would I say the right thing? I'm, I, I don't know how the ministry will work. And, and she used to talk like this. But you know, over the years, I can tell you today she can easily hold her own in front of any ministry in the world. And as she matured and grew 
in stature and grew in experience and grew in wisdom in ministry skills, she can get very busy. I tell you, my wife is busier than I am. She's counseling. She's talking on the phone. She's texting. She's sharing. She's leading. She's planning. She's administrating. Sometimes she goes to the toilet, and I don't see her for the next two hours. And I realize in the toilet, she's having a phone conference. She's having a big meeting with everybody else around the world. And as a husband, let me tell you that I'm very glad that she has got so skillful, so capable. But what I really care about more than anything else is not her work performances. It's not how great she is in administrating in the church or in the crossover project or in the, uh, you know, song leading or whatever it is. What I want to know is, son, we've been married for, what, more than two decades. Do you still love me as much as when I was just a brother Kong <laughs> in a bicycle, wearing batik shirt and a guitar? <laughs> Woo! That's what I want to know. And I can tell you, ladies, that's what every husband wants to know. After all these years, do you still love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind? Look, it's the same with Jesus Christ. He loves us more passionately than anyone else could ever love us. One of the greatest movies in the last 10 years was this one called The Passion of the Christ. How many of you have seen this one before? Put up your hands. Do you know the word passion? Everybody say passion. The word in Latin, party, means suffering. So the passion of the Christ means the suffering of Jesus. So the entire movie, three hours, is all about Jesus from his betrayal all the way to the cross. So passion has to do with suffering, sacrifice. Jesus loves us so passionately. He was willing to go to the cross, to lay down his life, to ultimately sacrifice it all for you and me. This is how God wants us to love Him too. Not just in the good times. Not just when the blessings is rolling. But are we willing even to go through some hardship and inconveniences and make some sacrifices? That's what passion will make us do. I pray with all my heart as we come to a new season and I really believe that our future begins today that we have gone through so much and we are still going through it. But as of today, the fire of passion will burn even harder for Jesus Christ. Come on, you're passionate. Give the Lord an enthusiastic clap. Somebody shout, Woo! The fire of passion. As I prayed this week, I felt the Lord spoke to me. He said, Kong, what I want is the fire of purity the fire of purity. And to be pure means to be clean. It means to be free from sin. Hey guys, I'm not just talking about religiously or theologically or mentally, you know that. I mean you actually live a clean life. To be like Jesus. Jesus loves us so much. He has a wonderful plan for our lives. We know that 2,000 years ago, He died for us on the cross. Jesus suffered it all. He took our punishment for our sin, for our shame. So what will you say? You say, well, praise God. Hallelujah, pastor. It's good to know. Thank you very much. You know, I'm, I'm so glad to hear this story. I appreciate that. No, 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 friends, you don't get it. It's more than that. Jesus Christ died for you. Jesus Christ died for us. What are we going to do for him? Well, nothing. I just enjoy him. Well, then you're doing something. Then you're saying no to him. Then you're rejecting him. 38 years ago, I did something when I heard the gospel for the first time. I said, Jesus, I'm a terrible sinner. Jesus, I want to repent. Jesus, I'm unclean. Jesus, do something in my life. Cleanse me. 
Purify me. Make me a brand new person. Make me a new creature in Christ. Friends, to be holy simply means to be living for Jesus. To be holy doesn't mean that, you know, you, you don't eat certain things, you don't drink certain things, you don't dress certain things, you don't go to the movies, you don't listen to music. No, 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 friends. To be holy means you live for Jesus 24-7. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, September, October, November, December. Every year, all the days of your life, you live for Jesus Christ. And this is the challenging part. How to live for Jesus in the world. And I believe prophetically, God put us here right in the heart of the city right in the center of the marketplace because God wants us to be a testimony, to be a trophy that He shows to the world that you can be in the world and yet not of the world. You can be in the world and yet be holy and living for Him. Oh, come on tonight, you want to clap? Somebody give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. But listen, to bring Christ into culture is not easy. But this is where we have a perfect model. And who is our model? Jesus Christ Himself. Hebrews 4 verse 15. Why don't we all read this verse together, all right? Everybody read together starting now. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are and yet without sin. Isn't that an amazing news? Jesus was tempted at all points. Man, that means he lived a very full life, you know. He didn't live a sheltered life. He didn't live a sanitized life. That means Jesus had been to a lot of places, met a lot of people, exposed to a lot of things, tempted in every possible area, and yet he was living for God his Father, and yet he was without sin. How many of you want to have the purity of Jesus? Put up your hands. Then there's only one way. Isaiah 48 verse 10. It says, Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. I will put you in the fire. If you want to be purified, that's what the Bible says, you got to go through the fire of affliction. So Jesus says this, I will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the power is promised, but to get the power, we need purity. And that's what God wants to see in us. Fire is necessary for purity. In life, we all go through difficult seasons. But how we emerge will either make us or break us. And our attitude is the key. We can come out of this. And let me tell you, it won't last for too long. We will come out of this either better or you're going to come out of this bitter. You're going to come out of this as sweet aromas to God. I went through it, but I don't smell. Are you going to come out of this? Man, you smell so bad. The whole world can smell it. What is our attitude going to be? This is something I have to decide. And this is something you have to decide. Psalms 50 verse 23, it says, Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him that orders his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. The context of this, you're going through a difficult time. You want God to save you. You want God to deliver you. You have a, you have a choice. Are you going to have an attitude of praise and thanksgiving? God, I'm not going to get bitter. I'm going to get better. Or are you going to start conversing negative stuff? God, you don't love me. God, you're no longer with me. What are you going to say with your mouth? Is it going to be positive words? 
Or is it going to be angry words, gossipy words, evil murmuring? You can choose because life and death, talk to me, is in the power of your tongue. James says, when we go through or we fall into various trials, so you're going through the fire of affliction, the furnace of affliction. If you want to be perfect, that means you want to be purified, then don't stumble in your words. Be careful what you say. And this is where it gets tough. This is where it gets really tough. You know, Shagrat, Misha, Abednego, they said, God, come on, God, you're going to deliver us. You're going to show us. You're going to prove that you're great. We know you can prove it. But if not, I will put my faith in you. I will still trust you. You know, in a moment like this, we all want proof. Come on, give me the proof. Give me the proof. And that's where the question is, can you walk by faith and not by sight? You know, let's continue, all right? Hebrews 11 listed Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego as heroes of faith who quench the violence of fire. You see, the fire purified them and made them heroes of faith. Their worst day became their best day. And I believe the same thing is going to happen to you. Your worst day is going to be your best day. God is going to make you heroes of faith. Oh, come on, give the Lord a big hand. Fire or passion? Fire or purity? Number three, the fire of presence. The fire of presence. Do you know in the Bible, when the holy fire came upon God's people, it came like a pillar of fire. That means thick fire. Thick fire. And that's what we want. Solomon's dedication service of the temple, the fire came. The glory of God was so thick. The Bible says... The people could not even enter the house of God. It was so thick and so strong that the musicians, 120 of them, they fell under the glory. They fell under the glory. I tell you, church, in spite of all that we are going through and you are going through, God wants us to keep the fire burning. You know, Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, The fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order on it. He shall burn on it the fat of the peace offering. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. We don't have to be passive. Yes, we're going through a tough time, but come on, one thing we can do we can keep the fire burning. 2 Peter 1, 6. Can we all read this together? Let's read this five times as loud as you normally will read, starting now. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. You know to stir up, stir up the gift? That means keep the fire alive. In the, in the Greek, keep the fire alive. How? Let's fan. Let's fan the fire of prayer. Let's fan the, pri the fire of praise. Let's fan the fire of worship. Let's fan the fire of our love for God. Let's, let's be more in love for God. Like what Son said earlier, let's be hungrier than ever before. Our backs may be against the wall. Fan the fire for our love for God. Read the scripture. Take down the notes. Worshiping the Lord. Let's fan the flame. We can do that. Guys, let me tell you, the fact that we came back here, the fact that we can still come back, it means that God is with us. God has a timetable. We are in God's timetable. God wants you to live a life of passion. He wants you to have a destiny and a hope and be passionate toward your future in Him. He has wonderful plans for you, plans that maximize the gifts He has given to you a destiny that's both pleasing to Him and a great blessing to you as well. 
The key to tapping into this destiny is to surrender yourself completely, to be consumed by His fire. Don't be afraid. His fire is not one that will hurt you. Yes, it may be uncomfortable at times because fire is a purifying tool that God uses to mold us into who we are created to be. But when you emerge from God's fire, you'll be like purified gold, precious and beautiful in the sight of God. Let's commit together to the fire of God's passion, purity and presence right now. Let's pray this prayer together. Dear Jesus, send the fire of God into my life. Let there be greater passion to love you, worship you and serve you. Send your fire of purity, burn away all the unholy things that are holding me back from a deeper walk with you. Let there be a presence and glory of God in me and around me all day long. I need you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Deep in our hearts, each of us wants to be loved, to find true love. The question is, where are you seeking love? Right now, Kong He wants you to discover a love that will never end that will meet the deepest longing of your heart. Please visit konghee.com and click on today's offer to get a copy of Kong's message on the greatest love. In his series, I Choose Love, learn that love is a decision that you can make. And when you choose love, you in turn will receive love far greater than you could ever imagine. This four-part series is our way of thanking you for your gift of any amount in support of this ministry. So please take a moment and visit konghee.com and choose love. Son, I thank you for your passionate support of our ministry. We are always so blessed to hear from you and know that this program is touching your lives and your walk with God. See you next week. Bye. Bye.